When dealing with a subject with very wispy hair or thin edges, you might need to go old school and actually use the hand tools to smudge and blur. This category of tools makes it easy to go in and actually push around like a paintbrush and refine things. I'll click on the layer mask so it's active and you'll notice that we do have a tool here for both smudge and blur. The blur tool can be really useful on the layer mask. So if I want to go in here and soften this edge a bit, I'll use a nice big paintbrush. The right bracket key will adjust that or you can use the menu here and just paint on the mask itself. And that blurs that edge. And that's really useful for areas with fine hair to create a gradual transition. However, maybe you want to push the pixels around a bit. Well, the smudge tool can really come in handy, particularly because it supports blending mode. So if I put it in darken mode and use a nice big brush, I could literally push the pixels in like they were wet paint. Let's put a solid color back there so you can see this better. We'll go with a nice bright bluish purple and put that behind. And you can see the edges now. This makes it easy to just push that in like it was wet paint. And I can go around my image and refine some of the problem areas. This essentially gives me that first pass, almost like a finger painting type pass, and in fact, you can use a finger painting mode to make this a little easier. If you have a tablet, you could turn on pressure sensitivity, so the harder you push, the more the pixels move. Let's switch back to blur for a second and really clean this edge up, and that helps. This is one of those areas that's really difficult to get a perfectly clean image, but by combining blur and smudge, I can go a long way. If you need to push the light pixels, just switch to light mode, and you can actually push the pixels in to fill in some of the holes. And this makes it easy here to clean up this left edge a bit to push that to the edge of the frame. There we go. That looks good. And when you feel like it's reasonably close, you always have the ability, of course, to switch over and use some of the refined mask tools. So there we go. I'll select the mask, open up properties, and click mask edge. And using things like the smart radius, I can clean that up quite a bit. There we go. Grab my refine radius tool get a little bit bigger and just paint over that transition zone. That looks good. And let's subtract a little bit here around the paws. There we go. And that area is just going to have to get touched up, so I'll just undo. There we go. Click OK. And the mask is updated. Using a combination of tools for the paw areas here, I can always just click on the mask and continue to use my smudge tools. In this case, using the darken mode to push in. And we'll just clean up that paw area a bit. There we go. And just adjust the strength, say to 20%, when you're working in some of the detail areas. And it's much easier to even build things up. In fact, I'll sometimes just click multiple times to push that around like it's wet paint. And again, the finger painting mode is perfect for that. At that point, that's a pretty good selection for a relatively complex area. I can use that as a mask for transparency or command click on it to load it as a selection and then take advantage of any of my other layer adjustments to do things like pop the color. Thank you